Hey guys, it's Mario here, back with another book review. And for this one, I have a book for you guys that I'm very excited to share. And it's one that I read back in 2013. And it's one of the books that really opened up my eyes to seeing the world a little bit of a different way. And specifically when it comes to motivation, how different people respond to different types of motivation. The book title is Focus. Use different ways of seeing the world for success and influence. It's a book written by a couple of researchers from Colombia, and it's a really fascinating read. And it all comes down around one big idea. And the big idea is that there are certain types of motivation in this book they call it promotion and prevention focused motivation. And in general, I mean, before I get into that, what that really means, is how we understand motivation. Well, it's quite simple, right? We are seeking pleasure or avoiding pain, you know, or that's kind of the basic idea around motivation. But the thing is that the way we derive pleasure and the way we avoid pain and what causes us pain can be completely different. So in this case, if we're dealing with someone who, let's say, is dominant promotion focused, the pleasure that these people would derive, this type of person would derive, would be more from uh, getting ahead, making progress, making improvements and creating opportunities, things like that are more risky. And for them, pain would be caused by missing opportunities. So if they would miss out on something or if something happened and they weren't involved or something happened that kind of, uh, they just missed out on making a, a step forward, right? Staying the same is kind of causing the pain and getting that pleasure is from moving ahead. And when it comes to prevention focused, there we have a little bit of a different picture. Prevention focus is more looking at, okay, it, how can I stay safe? Safety is what's giving pleasure. Basically having a running system, making no mistakes. That's kind of like avoiding any potential failure. It's kind of playing not to lose versus where the kind of promotion focus is literally playing to win, risking, taking risks, going through failure and still just because you're moving a little bit forward. And when it comes to kind of prevention focus, the uh, loss is really when you make mistakes. That's what causes pain. Just going outside of the system that you know works. So how does this apply in real life? Well, the example that I like to use to explain this thing, let's say you work in a nuclear power plant, right? And your job is behind a very, very important console. In that case, if someone would be motivating you, let's say you wanna increase the safety of the plant. That, that's the overall goal for this year. Someone came in and says, we wanna make this plant a little bit safer for the people that work here and in general. If someone would motivate you by giving you more money at the end of the year, and if they say, hey, if you make it a little bit safer, if you do this thing, you're gonna get more money. So it's kind of that simple way of motivating things. And I think in the book, they use an example of Boeing, right? So in this nuclear power plant, they wanna give you a promotion if you keep it safe. That's putting you in a promotion kind of state, right? But in that exact scenario, you don't wanna be in a promotion state. Do you want a guy who's taking risks and making experiments and doing all these weird things behind a console of a nuclear power plant? Probably not, right? Because if something goes wrong, if there's a tiny little mistake, the thing can blow up, right? So you want a person behind that console that is in a, promo in a prevention state, right? You want a person who's looking at safety. You want a person who is sticking to a working system and barely taking any risk, probably zero risk, I mean, in this case. And that's the type of mindset you wanna be in. So for that person, it would not be a good idea to try to motivate them to experiment and to take higher risks. But let's say someone is, let's say, uh, uh, a, a different scenario, someone's like a creative artist and they can do a lot of risks and it's like if they fail, you, you don't blow up a whole city or a state or a country, you know, that in that case, being more promotion focused with your career is probably a good idea because you're seeking opportunities, you're going through failures, you're learning from it, you're making mistakes. And the thing is with this whole prevention versus promotion focus, I think the whole promotion focus type of motivation is very glorified in the self-help industry and in the whole personal development field, a lot of people will kind of push that as the only type of person out there. So you can only be motivated by gaining, by improving, by moving ahead, which is not really true. I mean, in certain domains that might apply, but in a lot of domains, it really does play out much better if you are prevention focused. I mean, when it comes to 
general health when it comes to random stuff like that could be potentially life-threatening or things like that, you want to be prevention focused. In that case, you do want to play it a little bit safer. And you will notice, I mean, just by as I'm talking about promotion versus prevention, you can see how that would apply to your life. Let's say someone walks up to you on the street and says, we have this experimental drug. I mean, it might give you a mental performance boost of like 15, 20%. It's gonna make you awesome. You're gonna be much smarter. You're gonna get photographic memory, right? And the potential side effect is that you can get permanent brain damage. Would you really take that pill and say, yeah, let's be promotion focused, let's do this. No, I mean, most people probably not do that. Most people would be prevention focused in that domain, in that scenario and say, well, I'm not taking that risk. Right? Even though the potential gain is there, but I'm not taking the risk because the risk is not ever worth it, you know, just losing your health. But in, a, in another case, it might be worth it. Let's say if you're going to the gym and someone says, hey, here's a cool workout plan that might give you better results if you apply this. Sure, yeah, I want to try out that, you know, I want to try a different diet. Maybe I completely fail, but sure, I mean, if it's still fine. I'm excited about making new gains. So you can see how different domains, this applies very differently. And in the example in the book, actually, they use, I think, uh, Boeing's example of uh, how they try to motivate their employees to improve safety of Boeing. I mean, it didn't work at all when they try to give them more money, right? When they told them, hey, here's more money if you make it better. They put them in a promotion state and they were trying to improve safety. What actually was the suggestion after they applied this method was to tell people, hey, okay, you have all this money, but you will lose it at the end of the year if you don't improve safety. So they put them in that prevention state and that's how they managed to improve the situation. So it's very, very fascinating to see how the uh, human psyche can work and how these different types of motivation can be uh, applied. And for someone like yourself and me here, I don't see a reason why we couldn't use both you know, I don't see a reason why we couldn't be thinking, well, what are the potential gains of me investing my time in going to the gym, improving my health, eating healthy, getting my sleep and the goal is you can think about all the things that make you excited. Even if you're not promotion focused, you can think about all these things and get motivated by that. But you can also think about what are the, the things that you will lose if you don't do this, right? So things like let's say if you if you stay the same are you losing something right if you're if you currently have your health and if you don't go to the gym are you losing that right you can think about as a to put yourself in a little bit of a prevention state you can think about well if i'm able to do this right now do i want to be able to do this 50 years from now right do i want to be able to do this in my 50s 60s 70s regardless of how old you are right now in the future i mean i'm assuming if you're watching this video you would want to either maintain your current health or make it better right so you wouldn't want to make it worse so to put yourself a little bit more in a prevention state if you're in that response to if you're responding to that type of motivation you would think about what would happen and what happens, what could you lose in the future if you don't invest in this? So what you currently have. And that's a very interesting way of looking at things. And for me personally, I think I am a kind of a combination of both. I mean, it depends on the domain, of course, and business. I'm, I think I'm a lot more promotion focused because I'm looking to how I can try out different things. I want to experiment. When it comes to my health, I think I'm a little bit more prevention focused. I'm very, very careful what I do when it comes to health. I want to make sure that my current situation, I mean, never gets worse in health, you know, so I'm, I'm willing to take the risk, but as long as it's not endangering my current status with health. So that's kind of like the way I view things in, as well. And it's important really to know what motivates you. For some people, it really motivates them a lot more to think about the potential gain of a certain scenario, like, I don't know, girls giving you great comments, having great selfies, uh, meeting cool people in the gym, the exercising, having more energy, having more mental focus. Some people are more excited uh, for that rather than, let's say, thinking about all the things that you are running away from, which could be like, hey, I don't want to end up in a hospital bed in like 10 years. I don't want to get cancer, stuff like that. Because I mean, I don't want to increase my chances of getting these diseases because it's a, it's a chance at the end of the day. There's no guarantee that doing uh, everything would, would basically just have a chance of zero. You know, there's always things that you can do to minimize. But the point is that if you invest time in a healthier lifestyle, you will probably 
avoid certain things, you will minimize the risk. So you can think about it, okay, what am I running away from? In my case, what I'm kind of running away from, what I typically use as a motivation is that I don't want people to have to take care of me if it's under my control right now. So I know that if I screw up my health right now for the next 10 years, let's say if I screwed up in the past, and uh, one day I will have to pay the price for that, right? So it's important to know that if you're, let's say in your 20s and your 30s, if you're now screwing up your health, someone will pay that price. Maybe not even you back, like let's say in your 50s and your 60s, but someone will have to pay that price for you. Maybe it's your kids, maybe it's your loved ones, your family, whoever it is, they will have to take care of you. So they're paying the price for your negligence. So it's kind of an interesting way how you can motivate yourself just by thinking about all the potential scenarios. And I think it's very important, this book, what really the big lesson for me is not even the promotion prevention focused mindsets, but also just looking at there's different types of motivation that you might respond to. And it's really good to know what your response is. So let's say you want to get your friend to the gym. If the friend is, let's say, prevention focused, not going to work for them if you tell them, hey, there's a cute girl in the gym that wants to meet you or there's this uh, cool thing if you if you get abs, you know, everybody will like you a little bit more, right? Or stuff like that. If you try to give them money to go to their gym, it's probably not going to work because they're not interested in, in getting that benefit. They're not interested in, in, they're not very excited about the improvement as much as you are if you are promotion focused. So for them, it, something completely different would work. For them, it would be like tell, telling them, well, okay, you can... Uh, Right now, what you have, your health, you will lose that if you don't invest your time in the gym, right? If you don't invest your time, not in gym, but with general activity or it doesn't have to be gym. It can just be more active, living a more healthier lifestyle. You can tell them what they're losing if they're not doing that. So they will put them a little bit more in that loss aversion state and they will be more inclined to go there. And also it will get them again. I mean, as you get people to go somewhere, they get more invested and they're going to find that intrinsic motivation. So it doesn't have to be all that high level self-development, personal development, super, super high level woo-woo stuff. No, it can easily be something superficial to get people going. If it has to be, then eventually you can kind of layer the motivation. This is something, it's a little bit unrelated to this book, but it's a very interesting concept how you can understand motivation as well for yourself is that it is okay to be motivated by hot girl, right? Giving a comment on Facebook. It's okay, right? That's just one layer of motivation. It can be a little bit superficial and low level, but it's fine to have that there as well. But make sure to layer enough of things so you have a whole spectrum of different types of motivation. So it might be on a very high level that you wanna become the best version of yourself. You wanna inspire the world. You wanna give value to the world. Those are really, really high level. I mean, that's kind of like self-actualization, top of the pyramid stuff, but you also wanna, motivate yourself if if that keeps you going as well just by someone giving a comp in a gym saying hey dude like you look jacked or someone says on the beach hey you lost a little bit of weight or something like that it is fine to be motivated i think in the whole fitness and whole self-development world uh, this type of motivation just getting motivated by people giving you comments or something that people are actually are feeding your ego a little bit I think gets really frowned upon for no reason whatsoever. If you're the intelligent type of person, there's you understand there's no black and white type of thing. You know, there's no good and bad. You can see that it's a whole array of things. It's a little bit more nuanced. So it's completely fine to have different layers of motivation what motivates you, but make sure that you do have that high level stuff. So you're not just caught up with that uh, motivation of like hashtag bubble butt or whatever else you're motivated by uh, when you can, it comes to going to the gym. So yeah, I uh, wanted to share this with you guys. Really, really cool book uh, called Focus. There's another book called Focus by Daniel Goleman, which I'm gonna cover in the future. That's That book is completely different, very, very different topic. Um, but it is when you search for this book, Focus, you will find different types of ones. So just for this one, you wanna make sure that you're looking at the right one. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below as well. Also, I'm gonna leave the link for the review that I did previously, which was about the book, uh, The Flinch by Julian Smith, very, very short read awesome book on pushing yourself outside of the comfort zone and that is something that I wanted to share here with you guys when it comes to focus and motivation more books coming your way to read check this one out and uh, make sure to let me know in the comments below uh, what type of motivation uh, do you have when it comes to exercise and when it comes to your work are you more promotion or are you more prevention focused when it comes to your health and also when it comes to your work? So I'd love to hear in the comments below how many different types of motivation do we have going on here as well as what is your general dominant 
type of uh, personality? Is it more promotion? Are you taking a risk? Are you always looking for new things, new exciting opportunities, and you're afraid of staying the same? Or is it more like that you're okay, what you have right now, and you kind of want to play it safer, plan it out, more logical, step by step, and then kind of move a little bit forward, but from a safe position, right? So it's pretty cool. Let me know in the comments below. Aside from that, make sure to that subscribe button below to support the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. Good afternoon, YouTube. Finally time to get rid of this uh, Super Saiyan haircut. I'm gonna go to a local barber shop right now to get a good haircut done. It's been a while. I kind of enjoy this long hair, but uh, in, terms of <laughs> in terms of gains in the gym, the fastest way you're gonna look bigger and better, the fastest way you're gonna get more gains is just to do a haircut. There we have it.